Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Webs from Slidenerd here. In this video, we are going to talk about what is a process in Android. Now this belongs to a new playlist called Processes, Threads and Services on my channel. And all the upcoming videos are going to be talking about these little things. So before we get into the details or the specifics of anything, there are many people out there who are not well versed with operating systems. So first let me show you what is a process and what is a thread. So right now, I'm running Microsoft Word over here. If I say something like, hey, I'm saying, hey man, it's me man, remember. Now if you notice, I'm typing inside this application. Now that is one of the things happening. But even while I'm typing, there is someone out there who's checking the spellings of every single word that I'm typing. And this is happening simultaneously, that I'm typing in one place and the other person is also checking that the spellings are correct or not. Now these are called threads. Now let me go to the task manager here by saying control alt delete start task manager. Now if you go here to the processes section, what you would see is winword.exe. Now this is a single process. Within this single process, there are several pieces of code that are running in parallel. One of them is letting me type, the other one is checking if the spellings are correct. And hence there are several threads inside a process. Now that you guys have understood this, let's go back and try to figure out how Android works with these things. So as a user, when you first start your app, let's say you're starting an app here. The app has four components. Let's say your app has all of them. There's an activity, a service, a broadcast receiver, and a content provider. So if no components are running that for your app, so this is the first time you're starting it. So what will happen is a new Linux process is created. Your activity is put inside that process and it has access to a single main thread over here. All right. Now, however, if you start a service that belongs to the same app, and let's say the activity was already running, in other words, some component is already working and you started something else. So in that case, the service is going to be put up inside the same process as the activity and has access to the same main thread with which it will be performing all its tasks. Now, this is the basic mechanism of how processes are started in Android. Let's talk further and try to find out what we can do with them. Now you can have an activity, a service provider and a content provider, everything to run in a different process if you want. Now that can be done with this Android process attribute. But remember there are certain conditions to that. First of all, they should have the same Linux user ID. Now we will talk about what this Linux user ID is, so don't worry about it. For now, let's just assume that sentence as it is. And they are signed by the same developer, which means with the same certificates. Now, those are the two conditions. Now, of course, if the memory falls low, then Android may shut down a process just because insufficient memory. Now, this is very rare these days because these days all the phones are very high end and have lots of memory, but then still, this is a case that happens. So, the next question that should arise in your mind is which process should Android kill? So Android compares the importance of a process with each other. Let's talk about this. Let's say there is a process one which has two activities and a main thread. And let's say the user is currently not using this app. On the other hand, there is a process two which has again same two activities and there is a main thread. And let's say the user is actually working with this app currently. Let's say it's some kind of SMS app and the user is typing something inside the message. Now obviously this process which is process 2 has a higher importance compared to process 1 because the user is interacting with process 2 currently. Hence on low memory process 1 will be the first one to be terminated. Now of course it's not that simple. So let's take a deeper look at the process termination algorithm in Android. Try to figure out how Android judges who should be terminated. So let's talk about the different process importance levels in Android. The one with the lowest importance will be terminated first if memory is less. So the first and the most important process is known as the foreground process. This has the highest importance. So it can have either an activity whose on resume is currently running, which means you opened your SMS, you're typing something, that means the activity's on resume is running, therefore it's a foreground process. Or it has a service that is currently executing its service lifecycle methods. Now we will talk about what those methods are in the upcoming videos. Or it is a broadcast receiver that's currently executing its on received method. So one of these three things happening makes your app as a foreground process. Now the next one is of course the visible process where the activity is existent. Maybe it has an on pause called 
because the user had a dialog that pops up in front of the activity causing the activity to pause or it has a service that is bound to the visible activity. The third highest level is known as the service process. Now in this case, the user is not directly interacting. For example, you have no activities up and running. You just have a service that's probably playing music in the background and it does not belong to the first two categories. So in that case, that becomes a service process with a third highest importance. The next in the level is background process, where it means the user is not interacting in any possible way with the app. Now this one, this one is sorted out in your task manager on Android as to which app was last seen by the user. The one that is the most recently seen is the last to be destroyed because the user may probably switch back to the same process again, right? And then what you have is the empty process, which means there are no components that are currently present inside this process. It is merely running for caching something. Like for example, you start the process, let's say the activity executed, but still you keep the process alive, just assuming that the user will come back and start the activity again, so that you avoid the process of creating the entire thing again. So that would be empty process which has the lowest importance. So when you run out of memory, the empty process is the first one to be terminated. If not that, then the background process will be the next one to be terminated. So let's say you're downloading an image. Now there are two ways you can do that. You can have either a service in your app that downloads the image or you can simply have a thread that downloads the image. Now if you have a service, then your app is ranked higher as a service process. But if your app doesn't have a service and you're simply using a thread to download the image, then that will be categorized merely as a background process when the user is not interacting with it. And hence, this is the reason people keep saying all the time that use services to do long running operations, don't use threads directly, use an async task or use a cursor loader or something like that. Now this is the reason why I see that because you want your process to get a better priority and if you have a service, you get that priority. So in this video, we talked about what is a process, what is a thread, and how things are basically working in Android at a very high level. Now, in the next video, we're going to dig deeper into this. We're going to talk about something called the app sandbox in Android. In the meantime, if you guys do like what you saw, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.